Hey everybody, welcome in. I was stunned and surprised about how many people, when I said, anybody interested in learning about the Tesla Gamma Squeeze? That happened yesterday and the day before, and I had a resounding response. So here we go. Let's jump in and talk about exactly what's going on with Tesla. So it is a super interesting thing, and this is one of the um, options plays that I always look for and wait to pounce. So as usual, Channels about money, math, money, and freedom. And a super quick one. This will be less than 10 minutes. Disclaimer, this is not financial advice. This is edutainment, as you know. So first of all, let's talk about exactly what caused the big movement in Tesla. We went from like 750 to nearly 1100 in the space of a couple of weeks. So obviously they had killer earnings. You guys know I'm a Tesla bull. You guys know I've been talking about the peg ratio and PE ratio for Tesla. Back when Tesla was 650, 700, 750, it was around between 77 and 85. And I was like, this is trading under a PE of 100. And this is a peg ratio of about 1.5, 1.6, which isn't far off Google's peg. Google's, by the way, is approaching 3,000 bucks right now. So it's pff, market's crazy in Q4. Anyway, killer earnings, very low PE peg ratio. Morgan Stanley starts doing some math and saying, ooh, Tesla's cheap. They increase their price target to 1,200 bucks and Hertz order 100,000 cars from Tesla. This is, by my calculations, you know, a big chunk of cars, you know, 5 to 10% of what they can produce in any given year. So that's massive. So all of that caused a huge move. Now, what else happened? Obviously, in the past, you've heard me talk about this. We got Michael Burry. He shorted Tesla in 2021 and in August 2021 as well. So March and August, he was shorting Tesla. But let's talk about shorts first, what that means. Typically, a short is when somebody anticipates the value of a stock will decrease in the short term or medium term. And the intent, what they do is Michael Berry borrows stock at a high price and then he buys them back later at a short price. And uh, obviously he tried this and this is sometimes referred to as a bit of a short squeeze, but it's not exactly what went on here. So let me explain exactly what went down and a big thank you out there as well, Jeff, you rock. So uh, when we look at the way I play, the other way to play shorts is not necessarily borrow the stock, but you can do covered calls, which is selling a call option against a long position or even a call option position, or you can sell naked calls. I do both of these a lot, and this is a great way to harvest cash, generate money off your investment and generate perpetual income as well. So let's talk about a little bit, and I know this drives people crazy. This is a quick Greek refresher. Um, obviously, you have your Delta. Today, we're going to talk just about Delta and Gamma. They are number one and number three on the list here. But Delta is a sensitivity of an option price to change in the value of the underlying security, which is Tesla in this case. And Gamma is a rate of Delta relative to change of the price of the underlying security Gamma. Basically, it's a second derivative of Delta. So once you think of it like that, it's it's easy to understand. But just for some, it can be like double Dutch. So basically, Delta refresher... Delta is the change in price of an option based on the movement in the underlying stock. So for example, a deep in the money option has a delta near one, and an out of the money option has a delta near zero. And uh, just so you guys know, in full disclosure, I have a huge array of synthetic longs, call options, naked puts, non-naked calls on uh, Tesla all over different areas. And my deltas actually range from about 0 0.48 to 0 0.92. So for the 0 0.92, they tend to be very deep in the money. I've got some $400 calls, some 550 calls, some $600 calls. So the 450s, if the price of Tesla goes up by a dollar, my option goes up by 92 cents for every share. So that's kind of the easy way to think about that. But the gamma is simply put, it is the delta one less delta two over the price one, price two to give you the gamma. So this is the second derivative um, of delta that we covered over price. Now, as I mentioned, I've got a ton of synthetic longs, etc. And what I did over the last two days was I was selling $1,100 strike calls out of the money at about a year for between 195 and $265 on those. And the delta on those is extremely low. But let's talk about why and how it all operates. So the concept of a gamma squeeze is quite simple. It's like a short squeeze, but it's driven by options. And the further out of the money, the lower the delta. And basically, the rate at which the hedges were placed were no longer working. Now, 
this might lose some people. But here, you have to think about when market makers are selling call options out of the money, they typically have a hedge ratio of you know, one to four or sometimes two to four, depending on how far out it is in terms of time and expectation and volatility of the stock. But once the stock starts going crazy and moving high fast, this causes the market makers to have to cover their positions. So they need to move that ratio from instead of four to one to three to one to two to one to one to one in some cases. And that drives the price of the stock higher to cover themselves. And this is an additional part of the short squeeze that we mentioned before. So let's look at it another way, uh, Gamma explained. So the Gamma squeeze forces additional stock buying due to the option options position on the underlying stock. Put another way, the squeeze can happen when there's a widespread uh, amount of buying activity of short dated call options for a particular stock. And this effectively creates the upward spiral in which call buying triggers higher stock prices because the market makers need to cover their butts. Basically it. So uh, what a lot of people are doing now, you have a lot of speculators, you know, you've got the, the what they call the diamond hands guys, the uh, Wall Street bets team, and they start buying short term call options. Once they hear about Hertz and uh, Morgan Stanley and everything else, they say, oh, oh, let's go, go buy these things. And then the market makers are forced to cover. And that's what caused this huge squeeze. Now, the other way, uh, the other important thing to look at is what I like to trade is I like to trade volati volatility. You've heard me talk about this a lot as well. This is the implied volati volatility of Tesla from three days ago to today. And you can see the two different lines. The blue line is the old one. And the red line is what it looks like right now, today, real time. And I chose the 1100 strike because this had one of the most, the highest amount of volatility. And also what I do when I sell my options out of the money for say 200, 250, 190, 175, whatever the case may be, I think about my maximum target price. So I'm selling the $1,100 strike. I'm selling, say, a 250 on top of that. That means my break even is about $1,350 for this position. So I don't need to worry about that naked short I'm selling because I have an underlying position in the money until we get to 1300 1350 And I don't see Tesla going that high right now for a while, despite all the bullish sentiment. Now, let's look at the chart real quick. Here you can see the red arrow signifying the gamma squeeze. Massive gap up. The market makers were forced to cover and the rest is history. Now, what happens here is you can see um, the stock went up from 600 bucks to 700 bucks to 800 bucks, 900 eventually to a thousand and nearly hitting yesterday, it hit $1,094 and all due to the gamma increasing. And that's basically my signal to go short. And that's exactly what I did. Now let's look at another uh, example of a gamma squeeze. This is Illumina. This is a trade as well. I published um, within Patreon way back when, when it happened. And when I saw I had a $300 call, long-term leap on Illumina, I bought it at the same time. Kathy Wood exited her position and I saw this gamma squeeze happen. And I was able to sell the $600 calls out of the money when it went up to 500 from this gamma squeeze for more than I paid for my $300 call leaps. So this is the beauty of being able to identify these gamma squeezes and have that long underlying in the money position and then sell something out of the money against it. It's super lucrative. Now let's talk about where I believe Tesla is going real fast. So I see Tesla RSI falling right now. We are way, way overbought. It's way above 70. And obviously there's always a concept called mean reversion. This means it's got to come back down. It can't stay up here forever. Gravity will suck it back down. Also, if you look at the 50 day moving average and 200 day moving average, they are between 650 and about 780 right now. So you know that I believe the target price over the next three to four months for Tesla could come back down to the 850 or even the 750 range on a bad rainy day if there's some type of weakness in the market, etc. And that's just the way it rolls. Real simple, everybody. So quick conclusion. Gamma is very, very important. And I just want to say, we love babies. I would never do this. It's an old expression. But trading these options and selling them out of the money is like stealing candy from a baby. Something I would never do. So please, it's just a figure of speech, everybody. 
And remember, gamma trading, very, very lucrative. You got to know how to spot it and you got to know have the, have the underlying position and you got to be able to pick the right strike and the money to hedge yourself on the outside to harvest that extra cash and weight. And the, the options are for me, again, just to reiterate, Tesla could technically go to 1300, 1350, but I think it's highly unlikely, less than 5% chance of that happening. It's much more likely to go back down below 1000. And as the volatility wanes off, the price of the options that I sold out of the money will decrease because they're a function of volatility. So that's the lesson today. Hope you like it. And a big thank you for all the requests for this. Uh, this is a, a very, very important of my trading part of my trading strategy and uh, how to build financial freedom. So hit the likes if you like. Thanks, everybody. Quick one today, but I'll be on again later to talk about the crypto market and where we are. Buckle in.